this is our sub module 2 of wind energy yes so in this sub module we are going to start about the characteristics of wind yes so characteristics of wind wind characteristics are crucial so wind characteristics are crucial so this is crucial that means that they are important to all aspects of wind energy generation identification of suitable sites for wind farm projects and designing of wind turbines that means you have to know the wind characteristics to be able to design a wind turbine yeah so and projects that means you have to be knowing the characteristics of wind energy so now we are starting with the characteristics so wind is characterized characterized by so a velocity stroke speed so you have to know that wind is characterized by velocity or speed then the direction in which it is flowing then c variation so uh for velocity is just the speed at which it moves that means there is wind which has a higher speed and wind which has a low speed then the direction in which wind is flowing then c variation the wind is highly variable so like variable variable is like it changes both geographically and temporally variability due to different climatic conditions the tilth of the earth and other factors such as land water vegetation so these factors can lead to variation in the wind like physical factors like if you talk about land water type of vegetation and presence of mountains so if we are to give a summary we have the factors which affect wind velocity direction and variation yes so that's it now after knowing that the next thing we are going to do we are going to go for the advantages of wind so these advantages means what we can get from wind Wind energy is a source of renewable energy, which means it can be produced again and again. It is available in print, that is, being a renewable energy. Then second, reduces fossil fuel consumption. Dependence on fossil fuels could be reduced to much extent if it is adapted. Yeah, so we go for wind energy rather than fossil fuels. The land used to install wind turbines can also be used for agriculture purposes. That means if you place a wind turbine in an area, at the same time you can do agriculture. The wind is free and with modern technology it can be captured effectively. That means wind, there's nothing you put in, just flows by itself. Yeah, that's it being free. Yes, remote areas that are not connected to the electricity power grid can use wind turbines to produce their own supply. That is it. Wind turbines have a role to play in both the developed and the third world countries. Wind turbines are available in a wide range of sizes, which means a vast range of people. So if you summarize, you see that these are advantages of wind energy, wind power, what it can do, being captured effectively, that is for then three, the areas in which wind turbines are placed can also be used for agriculture purpose now the next thing as you know where there is an advantage there is a disadvantage so disadvantages of wind power noise disturbance eh? through wind energy is non-polluting the turbines may create a lot of noise so these turbines as they are rotating they can create a lot of noise so that is a factor threat to wildlife so threat to wildlife that means before setting a wind turbine there could be some wild animals which are there which can be displaced yeah so all that noise can scare away wild animals so that is it then the next thing is wind can never be predicted yeah it can fluctuate coming when it is high down yeah that's the main disadvantage it can keep on changing so the next is for situated to particular region 
Wind turbines are, situ are situated to the coastal regions which receive wind throughout the year. Yeah, that means wind turbines can be placed in particular regions. So that is it. Now, after knowing this disadvantage, we can go to wind speed measuring instrument. So when we talk about wind speed measuring instrument, we are talking about these instruments you can use to measure wind. The first one is a cup anometers. This feature has three cups. So as you see, these are the three cups. They are talking about this one, this, and that. These ones are cups. So these are cups. It has, and they are mounted on the small shaft. So if they talk about a small shaft, this is the small shaft. This very one, the small one. The rate of rotation of the cups can be measured by mechanical counters registering the number of, like the number of turns and so on. Yeah, so that is it. The lower the end of the rotating spindle is connected, the lower end of the connecting spindle is connected to a miniature AC or DC generator and the analog output is converted to wind speed via a variety of method, methods. So after doing that, now we go to the sonic. The other one was a cup anometer. So this is a sonic anometer. They use it as sonic sound waves to measure wind speed and direction. Wind velocity is measured based on the time of flight of sonic pulses between pairs of transducers. So as we cover in electronics, the transducer is a device that transfers one form of energy to another. So these ones use ultrasonic sounds to measure wind speed and direction. Yeah. Wind velocity is measured based on the time of flight of sonic pulses and the pair between the pair of transducers. So that is one. That is the second one. The third one is a vane anometer. The hot wire, so it has a hot wire. Anometer is the best for accurately measuring airflow at very low velocities e.g. under 200 feet some models are designed to measure velocities as high as one th is 1000 it is 10,000 5000 feet per millimeters but still have very accurate measuring capability <coughs> down to much lower speeds the vein anometer lies in a rotating impeller to sense air velocity vein anometers are best choice for measuring wind speed yeah so the next one is what we call the next one is what we call a hot wire a hot wire anometer is one of the kind of instrument used to measure the direction as well as the velocity of wind so this measurement can be done by measuring the loss of heat within the wire that is situated in the wind stream these devices use a thin wire and it is heated up electronically to some stage of temperature appropriately approximately higher than the range of the ambient temperature so they are used to measure the direction as well as the velocity of wind that is a hot wire anometer as you can see it here so this you see that that is the hot wire so this one measures the velocity of wind so now we are going to wind data analysis wind data analysis just simply analyzing parameters and things that cause wind to occur average horizontal wind speeds over specified time intervals average horizontal wind distribution uh, speed and direction distribution persistence determining gust parameters Static analysis including auto collection, power spectral density, length and time scales, steady and fluctuating wind components, seasonal annual, interannual, and directional variation of any of the above parameters. So the parameters are these as stated average horizontal wind speed, average horizontal wind direction, speed and the direction distribution, persistence. So all those affect the wind data analysis. Now the next thing is what we call the wind turbine yeah so like in in our lecture one we discussed about a wind turbine so a wind turbine is a device that converts kinetic energy from the wind into electrical 
it converts kinetic energy from the wind into electrical power so it converts that that means it converts kinetic energy into from the wind into electrical power wind turbines can be used to generate amounts of electricity in wind farms so a wind farm is simply a collection of many wind turbines so when wind turbines are placed in one place or like in some place they form what we call wind farms so types of wind turbine we have a horizontal, a horizontal wind turbine and a vertical axis wind turbine yeah so that is it vertical is this then horizontal wind turbine so now the next thing is what we call a horizontal so we are going to start with the horizontal axis wind turbine so whenever they talk about the horizontal axis wind turbine what comes into your mind so this the axis of rotation is horizontal that means if it is rotating this direction of rotating its axis is just horizontal so it rotates on that it keeps on rotating on this horizontal, horizontal axis that means the blade rotates on the horizontal axis so that is it this turbine has this turbine this turbine has the main rotor shaft and electrical generator at the top of the tower that means all that those parts are up i'm going to show you the images and you see how it operates yeah so and appointed into the wind advantages variable blade pitch giving the turbine blade the optimum angle of attack Changing the angle of attack provides greater control over power generated and enables maximum efficiency. As wind energy increases with height, the tall tower in the horizontal, horizontal axis wind turbine gives access to higher wind speed, minimum drag, and they receive power throughout the rotation. So what are the disadvantages? Due to inherent large structures, construction costs are very high and so are transportation costs. So these parts are expensive. Civil construction is costly due to erection of large towers. Wind turbine operation often leads to production of electric noise, which affects the other sites. In case of down, downwind horizontal axis wind turbines, the regular turbulence produced leads to structural failure. So horizontal axis wind turbines require an additional yaw control mechanism to turn the blades towards the wind. So the yaw control mechanism, I'll teach it to you. So these are the gears down, like they, they are down the niche here, and they help this wind turbine face in different directions. So these are the types of configurations of the horizontal wind turbines. There's one blade, two blade, three blades, multiple blades, down upward that means that wind is coming from forward there is upward passive yaw and upward active yaw downward passive yaw is a cone as you can see from there so this one is the one blade this is the two blade this is the three blade this is the multiple blade this is wind for upward it is coming from the front direction so this one has an active yaw then there are these ones without active yell. Yeah, so there are these ones like these. They don't have active yells. So from there, those are that. Then we go to vertical axis wind turbines. Vert vertical axis wind turbines have the main rotor shafts arranged vertical. So these ones will be like, you have a wind turbine, but it will just be like this. That means that all these blades are just vertical. So if they talk about the axis, this is what they mean. This is the axis. That means they will rotate if we are to, to show how they rotate. That means they rotate like in this direction. So they keep on rotating in this vertical axis. Wow! I used in sites where wind direction is random or there is pass or there is presence of large obstacles like trees, houses. So what are the advantages? So now we are talking about the advantages. A massive tower structure is not required. They don't require a mechanism. They are located closer to the ground and hence easier to maintain. They have lower setup speeds than their horizontal counterparts. They have a large noise 
signature that means they don't produce a lot of noise like the ones of the vertical of the horizontal so what are the disadvantages the vertical axis wind turbines have lower efficiency as compared to horizontal horizontal axis wind turbines because of the additional drag produced due to random rotation of the blades even although vertical axis wind turbines rotated because of the ground the equipment now reduces at the bottom of the turbine structure thus making it inaccessible because of their low height they cannot capture the wind stored in higher altitudes so this is what we have been talking about so this is the vertical axis wind turbine so it keeps on rotating here so it rotates on this axis as you see it keeps on rotating like that so you're saying that the generators and stuff are down that means the generators are here they're just down here so types of this vertical axis wind turbines we have a Persian windmill Savonia slaughter vertical axis wind tur turbines Dahlia slaughter axis wind turbines it consists of two of the convex blades with airfoil cross section yeah so now we are going to a wind turbine the structures of a wind turbine so as we said the wind turbine is a device that converts kinetic energy into electrical energy so that is it here so these parts i'm going to explain to you how they work so let's start with one easy to understand this is a tower as you know tower in english the, the part which holds the upper part so now these are what we call the blades so when you talk about the blades these ones are the blades these are blades so the blades are on the rotor and the rotor has a hub yeah so if you see just there. then we have the we have the rotor brakes we have the gearbox which is there we have a generator here we have a arm system here we have a grid connect box the foundation where they are found yeah so the turbine is mounted on a tall tower so when he talks about a tall tower he's talking about this to capture and to capture wind energy numerous wind turbines are installed at one side to build a wind farm yeah so now this is what we do so this is in 3d so i'm going to show you how it works so this is the oil control so this oil control in case this turbine is rotating and there is fluctuation of wind from this side if wind is coming from this side it will turn this turbine and it faces the other direction say wind is coming from this side so it will return rotate and it turns it that side where wind could be coming from so that is the whole control system yes then the other parts these are called blade pitch control yes they control that blade then there is this low speed shaft after this rotor this blade is rotating this low speed shaft will turn will control like it will take the mechanical energy to the gearbox like that rotational energy then the gearbox will increase the rotations and the gearbox increases on the speed of rotation then the high speed shaft will take the it will take the speed like the speed has increased now it will take it the generator to generate a state. Yeah. so now after knowing that shall come here to the wind power system components each wind turbine is made up of the following basic components as we have seen we have seen that there is this what we call a tower we have seen blades rotor which has blades we had seen shafts where we talked about the low speed shaft we have seen an electrical generator as i've told you which will convert the mechanical energy into electrical energy then we have talked about the oil mechanism then the sensors and the controls yeah so parts of the wind turbine so we are starting with the low speed shaft as i've shown you so the low speed shaft is this what is its function that is it so you have to know what it works does the rotor turns the low speed shaft at 30 to 60 revolution per meters so it will turn 
turns the low speed shaft at that, the rotor, then to that. Then high speed shaft. So when this guy talks about, when you are studying about the high speed shaft, this is the high speed shaft here. That is the high speed shaft. So what does it do? For it to drive the generator via a step up gear. So it has increased the speed and it is transmitted to the generator. Then the brake. A disc brake which stops the rotor in emergencies. It can be applied mechanically, electrically, or hydraulically as a brake. It can stop the rotations in case there is a mechanical fault, electrical fault. Then the gearbox has shown you it will connect the low speed shaft to the high speed shaft. So for it, it will increase the speed of rotation from 30 to 60 revolution per meter per minute to this. So it will increase it to 1,200 revolution per minute, per minute or 1,800 revolution per minute required for most generators to generate electricity. So the generator, it is usually, it is usually an off the self induction generator that produces 50 or 60 hertz of SC. Yeah, that's what it produces. Then the initial, so the initial, when they talk about the initial, the rotor attaches the shell which sits at top at the top of the tower and includes the gearbox low and high speed shafts generator controller and the brake so when they talk about the shell this is what they mean so all this part is what we call the shell this part here all these parts sit on the shell as they are said the controller Yes, so we have finished that. Then the pitch blades are turned or pitched out of the wind to keep the rotor from turning in winds that have speeds too high or too low to produce electricity. Then upward and downward. The upward turbine operates facing into the direction. So the upward turbine, that means that it faces the direction in which wind is coming from. Then when they talk about the downwind, that means wind is coming from the back of the turbine. Yes, so if this is your turbine and it is on this, when you talk about upward, wind is coming from this side, this side, yes, but if they are talking about the downward, wind is coming from the back. So vein, it measures the direction as we talked about the veins measure the direction and communicates with the yaw. So after it's showing that the direction may be from the back, communicates with the yarl so after the vein the vein is up here after seeing that the direction of wind is from the other side it is from the back here it will communicate with this yarl and the well well will turn into this direction yeah so the yarl drive it keeps the upward wind facing into the direction of wind as the wind direction changes so additional wind power system components anometers which measures the speed of wind and transmit the data to the controller numerous sensors they monitor and regulate various mechanical and electrical parameters stall controller to protect the blades from overstressing and generator from overheating power electronics to convert and condition power to the required standards Control electronics usually incorporating a computer. Battery for improving load availability in standard alone plant. Transmission link for com connecting the plant to the area grid. Yes, so rotor blades. When they talk about rotor blades. So rotor blades variables. So this, if this is your rotor blade, like this. If that is your rotor blade. So, they are variables, they can be numbers. Like if we talk about these are two, then we talk about one. If it is one like this, these are two. Then if they talk about the pitch, showed you the pitch, the shape, the weight of the material. So, that is it. Yeah. So, the next thing is aerodynamics of windy turbines. Aerodynamics deals with the motion of air or other gaseous fluids and other f and the forces acting in the bodies moving through them airfoil for the different energy extraction blades of a modern wind turbine are made with an airfoil station as you see that 
the distance is called there's a distance called the chord there's the angle of attack and the trailing edge and the chord line so there's what we call Bernoulli effect when an airfoil is placed in a wind stream air passes through both upper and lower sections of the blade due to the typical curvature of the blade air passing over the upper has to travel more distance by unit time than the one passing through the lower side thus the air particles at the upper layer move faster according to the Bernoulli's theorem this should create a low pressure region at the top of the airfoil this pressure difference between the upper and the lower surface of the airfoil will result into a force f the component of this force perpendicular to the direction of the wind is called the lift so lift force is that perpendicular force acting on the airfoil yeah so as we have seen if air is moving here is air moving is this one passing here and this one passing lower so when there is a pressure difference created there's what we call a lift force which will lift this airfoil yeah that is what we are talking about so as you see there is lower air here is flowing at a lower pressure but the other one is passing at the at a high at a low pressure so this is the angle of attack the angle at which the air is approaching the airfoil so these forces if they talk about this l this is what they call the lift the lift force then this is the drag that is what they call the drag force so Bernoulli's equation it says that the sum of static pressure and dynamic pressure assuming frictionless flow are constant p1 is the static pressure rho is the density of wind u is the local velocity along the airfoil so where it, uh, it is assumed that the first stream and upstream and the far downstream pressures are equal to p1 is equal to p4 and that velocity across the disk remains the same that means the u which is the velocity is the same so the drag is parallel to the direction of the, so this is the drag d it is parallel for the drag design the wind literally pushes the blade out of the way drag power turbines are characterized, characterized by slow rotational speeds and high torque capabilities they are used for pumping sewing or grinding a firm type windmill must develop high torque at the start up order to pump or lift water from the well so there's drag this force which keeps the thing rotating this drag as it rotates it's called drag force yeah now this is the lift force the principle the lift force is perpendicular as i've showed you earlier it is perpendicular like this to the direction of motion the lift blade design employs the name principle that enables aeroplanes kites and birds to fly the blade is essentially an airfoil or a wing when air flows past the blade, a wind speed and pressure differential is created between the upper and the lower blade. The lift is transmitted into rotational motion. That means if that lift comes, the blade will, so that is the airfoil blade, it will start to lift. Yeah. So resolution of forces. Yeah. So resolution of forces acting on the turbine blade. So there's a lift up. There's this lift force up. Then there is this one which is drag then when you resolve all of them you come up with the resultant force so there is a lift and this air which is coming there's a lift up and the drag as you can see that is it coefficient of lift so the next is called Benz limit the theoretical maximum amount of energy in the wind that can be controlled by a wind turbine rotor is approximately 95 59.3 percent this value is known as Benz limit is b e n z in practice the collection of efficiency of rotor is not as high as 59 a more typical efficiency is 35 percent to 45 percent a complete 
wind energy station includes water transmission generator storage and other devices which all have less than perfect efficiency to deliver between 10 percent and 30 percent of the original energy available in the wind then wind power the kinetic energy in the air of mass m moving with speed v is given by half mv squared as you see it is a half mv squared where m is the mass and v is the velocity of the wind and we know that we know that m which is mass is the same as rho a v where rho is the density of air and a is the area swept by the rotor blades and velocity that means air density area swept all affect the wind power so example so you see this example how much power a turbine with 50 meters so this one is like 50 meters we are going to talk about it's like the radius can generate with the wind of speed of 12 meters the site of the insulation is about 100 feet above the sea level assuming 40 percent efficient so know that air density is lower at higher ele ev elevation for a thousand feet above sea level p is about 1.16 kilogram per meter so you come and say so you are going to come and say power is equal to a half row where it is density area velocity and n which is the efficiency so i'm going to multiply a half times the density times this area we know that is equal to pi area is equal to pi so it is long so this is pi d so if i consider circumference area which will be like that 50 then you get the power in watts then you can convert it to megawatts so there's an, a case where we are going to assume the efficiency where the efficiency is assumed 40 percent the answer is 3.15 megawatts yeah so this is our lecture on wind energy that is lecture two characteristics of wind we have covered all these as you see so thank you for being patient thank you for subscribing to this youtube channel Yet, there are other things we are to cover about wind energy and other tutorials about engineering. Kindly subscribe to this YouTube channel for more interesting and innovative tutorials.